Hey everybody, thanks for joining the video. I just wanted to real quickly say I'm sorry for the microphone quality. It peaked and I don't understand why. I'm trying to adjust some of the settings that I use for one of the microphone softwares to record the audio and apparently I had the settings wrong or something like that. So if you would, please forgive me and I will try to get it fixed before I do another desktop video where I share with my computer screen. Anyways, continue on, thank you. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 92 here on season number two. And today we are getting into is Union Pacific a uh, good stock. These videos are meant for educational purposes only and not meant to be taken as financial advice. You are responsible for your assets and to protect them. So always, always, always do your own research. And, and even if it is a good undervalued stock, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a time to buy that stock or that you'll lose money or make money. That's just the strategy behind how to figure out if a stock is that undervalued and then if it's a, also a good stock. Union Pacific is also one of those stocks that is listed on Stash as well. So if you have Stash, you can also buy into Union Pacific. So we're looking at, is it a good long-term stock? Is it currently undervalued? And are they just even a, a good company in general? And we're gonna be looking at this from a long-term fundamental analysis side and not, not using technical analysis at all to figure out whether the stock is going to be a good long-term undervalued stock. I do, like I say, plan on releasing one of these videos every single Sunday. I've been kind of botching it with, with releasing videos and so on and so forth as I'm changing my schedule to try to best fit some of my family's needs as well. But if you have a company that you would like me to check out, feel free to post it down below and I will try my best to release it in a coming video. Without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the overall uh, stock. So this is, Union Pacific, it actually is called UNP, is the ticker, and do I understand it? I feel like for the most part, uh, it's understandable. At first, I was kind of intimidated because it's such a, a, a bigger company that I was kind of like, well, I don't know if this is correct. And so I could be completely wrong with my understanding of the company, and if I am, feel free to let me know in the comments because I would hate to provide like false information. As far as like products and services they offer, a service they offer for like transportation, most of their stuff is business to business. Their industry is, this, is services. Their form of a company is a corporation. Their geography is pretty much the Western United States. So anything I believe west of the Mississippi is what they consider. And then their status, one of the leading railroad companies in the United States. This is Union Pacific. Are, are they good in the past? I actually didn't update this, but it's supposed to be a, a yes. And if you look out their return on capital employed, they did like 18%, 16%, 15%, 15% again, or 14%, 15%. So like that's pretty good. Uh, anything above uh, of 15% it is considered like good. So I mean, one year they did not as good, but they got the 18% that averaged that out. So I like that. And then also here, uh, free cash flow, return on capital employed, they're positive all these years. I would like to see these numbers average out to above 8%, and then operating income per fully diluted share, negative 6% there, which is kind of weird, and then a positive seven, and then uh, two positives here. And as far as liabilities to equities, we don't want to see this over two, so we don't want to see the ratio over two. So right now it's at like a 1.3 or 1.79. That one's close to, this one's even closer, but it looks like they're start to, starting to pay down their debt or increase their equity. Is it good in the future? I said no, and we'll get into why it's a no here shortly. Is the company's customer base unlikely to consolidate? Yes, it's not going to consolidate any time soon. They have, they serve roughly 10,000 customers. So they do serve quite a bit of people and they don't serve anyone over 10%. And then is their customer supplier base unlikely to consolidate? I said yes. However, I don't really know exactly where their supplier base is. I, that's that side of it. I don't really understand because I feel like most of their cars and stuff that they use to tow the trains are already manufactured so they won't be shelling out money for that. Will they? Do their customers have any barring, bargaining power? And I said very little because they have such a huge amount and it would be too much for them to do backward integration which would be to build their own trains and that kind of thing and then also the switching cost. Uh, there might not be a more affordable train out there or a way of transporting their goods. And then forward integration, it really doesn't make sense 
Also, because of the cost to get into the tra or the train market, I think that that keeps the the suppliers out of bargaining. Uh, as far as like the the power that customers and suppliers have, I don't see as very powerful at all. Then the threat of substitute. I said that there could be a threat of substitute, like trucks or airplanes, semis, that kind of thing. And then direct substitute. There's no like really direct substitute, from my understanding. Union Pacific is pretty much the only one. And then could people go without? It, and I said, probably not. If you're using Union Pacific to ship, you're probably relying on them. And so it's not something that you could just be like, well, too bad we're not shipping anymore. Come pick up your stuff. It would be pretty pretty hard to do that. And is there a wholly different way of doing it? I said yes with like trucks and airplanes. That could be a wholly different way. And then also maybe even like the internet and with like uploading audiobooks and that kind of thing. Maybe we'll see if that, that happens. And then lastly, is there a threat of new entrances? And I said, not really. There's not really any threat because it really doesn't make sense from a financial standpoint to invest all that money into infrastructure to see if you can even get a return. Which is why I said that as far as like mode identification, they probably have brand identification and also switching costs because it would just be so much. However, the reason why I said no is because when you get down to shareholder friendliness, while their CEO still only makes around $27 million, which anything under 30 is considered acceptable, Jane H., which is a non-director, just a person on the board, a person who consults with the company, she made $513,000 $513, last year. And anything over $250,000 is basically a no. I mean around $250,000, but anybody that makes double that, that's a complete no, and I just stop looking at the company. But if you're wondering if they're overvalued or undervalued right now, they are currently overvalued. They sit at a 24 for market cap over free cash flow. We like to see that around like a seven, eight, maybe. And then also enterprise value over operating income is at a 14. We would like to see that at a seven. And then market cap book value and market cap over tangible book value are going to be the exact same. And those are four. We'd like to see them at or three or lower. So as far as it goes for Union Pacific, it is, I believe, it is. It still could be considered a good stock, but right now it's definitely not a cheap stock. And so for that reason, I'm not looking to invest into it. We will go ahead and leave it right there. Let's go ahead and jump in to the question of the day, which is how much of your body would you cybernetically enhance if you could? And I, I probably do about 20%, 20 to 30%. I feel like that would still give you 70% control and then 30% not control. As far as like what I would use it for, I would have no clue. I don't even know what cybernetically is. Maybe it's like applying robots to your body or attaching robots or something along those lines. So I always say if you got any questions regarding Stash, Acorns, Robinhood, as well as general investing advice, business Etsy coaching, post those questions down below. Don't forget to subscribe up here and check out my Micron. Is it a good stock? Check out the video right here. And as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it.